Okay, we're back live at NAB at the Intel Studio Experience. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, provide the analysis, independent editorial coverage of NAB. And I want to thank Intel for allowing us to be here. I'm with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. And John, I, I go back to when I first met you and you came up with the concept of theCUBE. And, um, and I think of how far we've come in the last two years, and, and a big part of that was the, uh, the TriCaster, which enabled a lot of this. So. Yeah, so we got yeah. into the business mainly as a, a way to kind of experiment with social media, broadcasting, social TV, and uh, we bought a, a, a new tech TriCaster. It was the first one uh, off on the lines that had the multiple inputs, all these cool features, virtual sets. And here, Andrew Cross, the CTO of New Tech, is joining us. Welcome to the, cu the Cube. You're on the Cube, the what? famous Cube, New Tech. I am very honored to be here, and it's just wonderful to find that you're actually users of our products. This is just a great experience for you me. You enabled us, and we're going to cut a deal on the when you leave about getting some free equipment, so you know, hey, you know, make sure. We'll work that out. We'll work that out. <laughs> okay, you're on, you're on record. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Cubes. In all serious, we really appreciate that. But New Tech, you guys are really in that, in that group. Um, we were talking before we came on around how the media business is changing and how broadcast is not just for the big guys, the big dogs. It's evolving into every day, every day business, every day small, medium sized business to indie broadcasters and new guys like us who can come in and actually deliver content. We do the analysis and, and Wikibon has the, the analysis. So take us through where you guys are. What kind of year did you have? What kind of products did you guys launch? And where are you going here today? Well, for last year, so last year really was one of the best years, well probably the best year that New Tech have ever had. We've shipped more TriCasters uh, in the last year than ever before. And you know, we're just really seeing this thing explode. And you know, we're just seeing more and more demand for people who want to get onto the web. But, it, but it's growing beyond that because you know, we've, we've added this, something that we call ISO cording technology, which is basically the ability to take all your camera inputs and also record them to disk. But what this does is means that if you're doing a show, it needn't necessarily be live because you can do the live show, you can record it, and you can walk away with your produced show and the media. So in many ways, this is a much quicker way if you to, to make a pre-edit of any kind of show, not just live shows. And so that, that is something that's really starting to change a lot of people, you know, the way people do production. Yeah, so you've got professional production values uh, in the TriCaster. What are you announcing this show? Because you know, every year there's always the new announcement. What's the new announcement this year? So we've got three big announcements, um, although I'll break them into two parts. We're basically revamping our whole TriCaster product line. So we're announcing the 455 and 855 TriCaster, which are the latest models in the TriCaster product line, and those are shipping now. We're also announcing the 8000, which is what we believe is truly the next generation of portable live production. And it really just adds these incredible features. For instance, it adds integration into social media. So while you're producing the show, you can actually be marking up clips and putting secondary angles, secondary clips, secondary grabs onto the social media. Because it's very clear that you know, the, the social media and all, all the online following has become as much part of the show as the show itself now. And so we're really trying to build our products to actually allow people to take that to the whole next level. So that's a U is that a UI change or is that uh both UI and tech that you're building into it that? It's a bit of both. But it, but it really changes what the live production device is because you know traditionally people think of these things as, hey, we have a whole bunch of cameras, bring it into a box, feed it out as a program out feed. But what they're becoming is it's got a whole bunch of cameras, you bring them into a box, and they're getting sent out to all these places. You've still got your program out feed, but you're also putting secondary angles, secondary clips, comments, and so on, all onto the web, onto social media sites, onto Twitter, onto Facebook. And that's where a lot of your viewers are currently following people. I mean, yes. it's yeah, so we do that today, and it's all, it's all sort of manual and we do do that process sort of outside the normal flow. You're saying yeah. that's all integrated now. Absolutely. Actually, you make a great point because I, 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 I was actually thinking the other day, I, I, I watched Star Trek, the, you know, the Star Trek 4. I don't know if you know this, but you know, when they blow up the planet Alderaan, they actually used a switcher to do it. You see them like pull the yeah. T-bar <laughs> and they blow up the planet. But it's kind of funny to look at because that was made 30 years ago and ultimately switches really haven't changed that much. But if you think about production, I mean, hey, look at you, you guys. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're production. Good. We're good, has right? yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but you know, you, you guys are breaking your ground. I mean, you're on the web. We that was your primary, yeah. you know, wh where you started, and that, that's right. amazing. I mean, production has changed, and yet a lot of the technology behind it so hasn't. So the, the big theme here, I want to ask you a question about in-field editing and being like we're at an event. So having that box that does multiple functions. We'll get that in a second. But quick product question: on the UI and TriCast, are you going to have backwards compatibility of the UI for the older versions? Um, so, so what what exactly do you mean by backwards compatibility? Is um, I mean, our, our UI, you know, we're back toward to the um, older units. 
Well, we, we, we have been very good about making sure that as new versions come out, we, we roll those features back as we, as we can. And I think we've probably done a better job than probably almost anybody else here does at that. And we, we're not planning on changing that. I mean, that's a key part of who New Tech are. And we're going to certainly, wherever it's physically possible, we're going to continue to do that. And you know, here we, we announced the new products. We announced a whole bunch of accessories and so on that will also continue to work with the older units. OK, so back to the field editing. So I, s I walk in through the booth because Black Magic is out there. People are cobbling together their own versions of TriCaster. Um, and there's a lot of other products out there for infield editing. Are you guys looking at that area with the new product, um, uh, making it more robust for on the ground editing? Yes, I mean, the, you know, Isaac recording it takes a huge step in that direction because it becomes the ingest box and the real-time editing box. And so you can walk away from your show with all the raw footage and a pre-edit, which was what you did live, and then you can take all those files into your NLE, say, and just finish up any takes that didn't work well, and you don't get any faster than that. So for companies like us who are expanding with the TriCaster, thank you, thanks to you guys for enabling that uh, business model, we're going to be expanding our operations to be much more, I wouldn't like a big broadcaster, but we have other needs like broadcasting and recording simultaneously, bring into a network operating center. What kind of features are you guys going to be adding in that area? Well, we're focusing, so, so one of the big things we're focusing on this year is we're trying to make the interoperability with other systems much, much smoother. So we made it so it's much easier to get you know, the, our files out to pretty much any NLE that's out there. We've made it much easier so that you can bring media in so that no matter what you're producing your media in, that it can easily be brought into your show so that you can start working in environments that they are not worrying about how to get data backwards and forwards, how to move files in and out so that you don't need to do any transcoding. So let's talk about the code, uh, codecs out there, the encoders. I see Adobe, you guys use because everyone uses it. I see there have been complaints, and you're aware of those guys, uh, the complaints around the um, uh, Adobe FL Mini. What is the new things you guys are going to do to fix that, and or are you going to offer more diverse options? Well, um, you know, streaming pretty much has moved to H.264 video encoding with AAC audio encoding. And so Flash does that. Actually, the, the latest um, Windows technology does, you know, uses those same codecs. There's some, you know, there's some change on the, the streaming side of things, so a lot of people are doing HTTP streaming now. But you know, on the on the sending side, so on the TriCaster side, there's not been a lot of evolution in terms of you know what how those technologies work. Most of the servers are still ex expecting the exact same things. Now I can say that we've put an awful lot of energy into the backend data that gets fed into the encoders, so that we work around some of the, the quirks, let's say, that they have, so that you know that it works more smoothly with a TriCaster than you could probably make it work elsewhere. So talk a little bit about the simultaneous recording and streaming. I mean. Since we've got our 300s, you've introduced a couple of models. You sort of on the pace of uh, in Moore's law, I guess. Um, how's the performance, and, and is it how do you manage that challenge? Well, that's a great challenge, and th you know this is one of the areas where I think that we have really, you know, the sets us apart. And actually, we're at, you know we truly use what Intel can do to you know to power these systems. In fact, so if you think of it, so, I'll just talk about the 8000 because it's quite staggering what it does. So it can record eight channels of high quality video to disk, and we're talking broadcast quality, not you know H.264 quality, broadcast quality to disk. It can stream to the internet, it can mix eight channels of video, it's got two DDRs, it's got two um, network inputs. It can also do motion tracking on 10 inputs at once. That's just incredible. Motion tracking in HD, it can do rendering of live virtual sets, and it's doing all of that at once with ev everything else as well. I mean, it's just what's staggering what What's the price point of that product? So that, that product is at $40,000, so 39995 um, but that also includes our control surface that comes with it. We were talking with Eric Jackson, who's a photography guy with Showreel, about the cameras are getting better and better. The photography is amazing. So obviously, you guys have done a, taken advantage of that. Uh, at the low end, Livestream announced a proprietary product that lets you plug in with S um, HDMI and, and to do basic, not full HD, but 720. What are you guys doing on the low end for, like, if we wanted to go out and, and broadcast and produce without boxing up everything and shipping it? Is any, any lower end products coming out? Um, I'm afraid I can't speculate on future products. <laughs> I, I get myself in trouble with the marketing guys if the I do. The mobile TriCaster, um, is that coming anytime soon? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, y you guys have got the 300. That's pretty small and pretty mobile. Yeah. Um, you know, the, we, we have the, we have the broadcast, oh, sorry, the TriCaster Studio available. And that, you know, that's, that's about the same form factor. 
Um, and, you know, we're always looking to new, fun, and exciting <laughs> things. And, you know, you should definitely keep an eye on us. Andrew Cross, CTO of New Tech, great company. We really endorse them. Um, they don't pay us for that. We actually bought our unit, but they enabled us to do our cube. Appreciate it. Congratulations on the new product, and uh, we'll stop by the booth later. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Great to meet you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you.